Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Martin Waghorn is dreaming of a cup final to remember for Rangers against Hibernian. Miles Storey has signed on at Pataudry for Aberdeen. And could Kieran Tierney be on his way out of Celtic for £10 million? Just a few of the stories we'll be talking about on tonight's programme. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. And I'm delighted that our boot room guest is none other than than Tony Higgins. Um, Tony, a uh, long way from the playing days now. It's a job that not too many fans will know the title uh, at FIF Pro. What basically is that role for you these days? Well, I'm the Vice President uh, and FIF Pro is a global organisation. We represent uh, 65,000 professional players in 60 countries and we're responsible for the regulations concerning players' rights uh, with FIFA at the highest level and also the confederations within the regions. So it's a it's a mighty task. We had our 50th anniversary now, but of course, understand most fans are not interested in the real politics of the game. But the reality for players is, it's a very, very important organisation. Yeah, is this the most painful time for players all across the globe? All over the world, you know, it's really painful, uh, and particularly the players in parts of the world who have not been paid for six months or nine months, and yet their contract has expired, and that's part of the battle we're involved in. But as it's the most painful time for the average player, I think we're all. You know, we all read the glamour stories of the Premiership in England or La Liga in Spain and the Bundesliga, but the reality is for probably half the players in the world, it's all about survival uh, and that's a, a big issue for us, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing about it, is there a big worry, and this is something that's uh, reared its ugly head over the last few months, is there a big worry across Europe uh, about, and probably beyond, about the money and the riches of the Barclays Premier League in relation to every other country's football? There is, because uh, there's, there's two debates going on about the concentration of money within one country uh, for global rights, and you've got to praise the, the Premier League in England for the marketing they do, and also the issue of the threat or discussion about potential breakaways of the Super League clubs within Europe as well. Um, and, you know, that's a real danger for football going forward. Uh, Carol Heinz Rummenigge has made it quite clear he wants more money from the governing bodies, uh, and if not, they'll look at other ways of creating wealth for themselves. And I've got a real worry in football throughout the world that there's a real polarisation, because football, although it's about the big clubs, it's not only about the big clubs. If we look at in Scotland, some of the exciting games forthcoming, it's involving um, you know, the playoffs a whole lot. That's just the average clubs in Scotland who are getting together and playing a real tournament which is attracting fans. So if all the money gravitates to the very, very top, We'll find it really difficult to furnish the rest of our clubs with decent finance to compete. Yeah, and just briefly on that, before I bring Ruffy in, is there a, a genuine move now to sit down with guys like Kyle Heinz Rummenigge and say, look, you're trying to destabilise the whole structure of domestic football in every country? Yeah, but that's an important aspect. And the other problem we have at the moment is because Platini has been suspended, and now that's confirmed by the by this court in Strasbourg that um, they won't be able to be involved in football for the next four years. Um, that means that FIFA, uh, sorry, UEFA has been rudderless in the last year or so when these talks have been taking place. It needs, it needs firm leadership. And at the other end, of course, Blatter has been out of action as well for the mm. last uh, year. So there's been a lack of leadership in the two organisations which have the most ability and strength to confront these ideas. So the quicker we can get Gianni Infantino uh, and behind the desk and uh, a new uh, UEFA president, the quicker we can get these talks going. Yeah, OK. Um, we're going to talk more about that later on in the programme. Um, this week, you mentioned the games that everybody can look forward to. <laughs> uh, of course, the Rangers players have been speaking today. No surprise, Martin Wycorn, like many, Ruffy, dreaming mm -hmm. uh, of the cup final and completing a treble for Rangers. Yeah, uh, more so him, you know, because he was doing so well, you know, and scoring goals for fun, and then he picked up the injury. Uh, I think a lot of people thought that was his season finished, but now, as we know, with the technology they've got at the clubs, he's fit again, and he and more than anybody will be desperate to go back into the goals and pick up a medal. Yeah, I just uh, yesterday we had uh, Gordon Smith on, who played in possibly one of the most boring Scottish Cup finals of all time, Tony. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to rack my brain because I, I know you played for him up until 1980. So did you play in that terrible game? I, I actually broke the deadlock. <laughs> I broke the deadlock in, in the third game, and that was incredible. I don't know if you remember, Ruffy, but the, that's a bollish replay. 
plays after that. <laughs> the, the following year. Really? The, yeah, yeah, Bully Shree <laughs> plays after that. But, I mean, I, what, I, I, there was two things in that. that the, the, the first game, we should have won. Colin Campbell, Brian McLean denied as a stonewall penalty. Uh, with nine minutes to go, Colin Campbell was straight through. The replay was on the Wednesday. And because of the home internationals, <coughs> we didn't play the second replay for 12 days. So it was terrible extracting yourself from that beach in Magaluf to get back yeah. to play a cup final, you know. Like, and there are no beers tonight, I'm playing the cup final next week, you know. But um, so we had to we had to wait for twelve days and it was in the training most mm -hmm. days and playing golf and old Eddie Turnbull was trying to find ways to try to occupy us to deny us our normal uh, close season existence, you know. Uh, and with that in mind, you know, on the flip side of Martin Wycott and, and a Rangers side that I think go into this as, as favourites, you know, guys like Keith Wright, uh, lots of ex-Hibs players will be rolled out this week talking about mm. uh, their previous experiences of trying to finally get mm. this uh, monkey off the back with winning the Cup. I don't think there's any doubt if if they win it, despite the disappointment of the playoff rough eight, these guys will be legends if they can win this Scottish Cup. Yeah, and the space of time, you know, since they have won it, they will be, you know, in most clubs, it doesn't matter what club you're at, if you're Wraith Rovers or, or whoever, once, once you win a cup of that, you are etched in history and uh, and the supporters will remember you. So that's something that, that I'm sure Alan Stubbs will be using, you know, to sort of motivate the and players. And you know better than most from... 1971, yeah, you know, that's still talked about and lauded yeah. after, yeah. what, 40-odd years? Yeah, I mean, the, the amazing thing, again, is you mentioning should have had a penalty uh, in that cup final, yeah. and then, you know, as the decades go on, suddenly it starts to grow and grow, it gets on the back pages, never won the Scottish Cup, never yeah, won yeah. it, um, you know, and then you look at <coughs> even Hibs this week, uh, over the two playoffs, one of them should have had a penalty, yeah, yeah. and on such decisions can change the course of history. Yeah, I mean, I didn't suspect it's what nearly 40 years ago that um, losing that we lost a, mm -hmm. a, to Arthur Duncan an own goal. Yeah, it was two minutes. We're actually going into another replay. <laughs> uh, it was only two minutes to go when Arthur scored an own goal with a fantastic cross from David Cooper. But of course, it, uh, if you remember that squad, then with people like Jackie McNamara, my comrade, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Ali McLeod and stuff like that. And we negotiated with Tom Hart, the chairman, that for every cup tie we played in, we get a half bonus, right? So we'd have been, we'd have been happy to draw. <laughs> I mean, I mean ten, 10 replays that summer, then maybe one in the cup, the beginning of August, you know, then. <laughs> and, <laughs> but so we get a half bonus for, for every draw we played in, in every cup tie. Uh, but of course, uh, for Hibs fan, the silver line, of course, would, been, would have been the victory itself. But we're two minutes from a third replay, and God knows when they would have played that game. Yeah, yeah it's incredible. And, and again, this current generation, I mean, as a player yourself, Tony, how do you pick yourself up? How do these guys galvanise themselves enough now after all the disappointment of this season? Yeah, I mean, I think, but I've always been, I've seen Hibs uh, seven or eight times this year. My big worry was always, although they had a sort of, in relative terms, a good squad at that level, that were they fighting in too many fronts? Because they have to be up for so many big games. But uh, I think in terms of preparation, that uh, as of yesterday, Alan Stubbs and the staff there will, will lift the players. And I'm sure that come the final itself, they'll be motivated to do well. Uh, hopefully they won't lose an early goal or something. It could change the dynamic of the game. But I think they'll, a week will be an, enough time, I think, because of the, the, the level of expectation at Easter Road and also the event itself, that they'll be lifted and they'll be ready for the, the battle ahead. Yeah, do you sense there's belief in them? Because, you know, speaking to Hibs fans three or four weeks ago, suddenly it was all there for the taking, <coughs> and now is the, you know, just slowly but surely chipped away at the confidence. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean that, there's no doubt that is a problem that will prey in the back of some of the players' minds. That's why it's such an important responsibility mm -hmm. on the coaching staff to really dispel those notions because uh, as a, this is a unique event, you know, uh, of course, and particularly for Hibs to have the responsibility of history when guys like me should have done it many, many yeah. years ago. You <laughs> know, your fault. Not, <laughs> I, I'm to blame as well. I'm, I'm part of the history of blame, you know, but... Uh, um, so there's that expectation, but I think that Alan Stubbs is skilled enough and his staff to have the guys ready in, in preparation. And paradoxically, to win the cup, maybe missing you know another playoff game yeah. might assist them physically uh, for dealing with the cup final. But of course, playing Rangers in Glasgow is always a big, big effort required. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, as Tony said. The, the players will go in believing 
that they can win, you know, obviously with the games they've had against Rangers, they've, they've beaten them twice, you know, so that's not a fear, but the fear for me, as Tony touched on it briefly, is if Rangers score first, because then the heads will go down, then everything that's been happening in the last fortnight, you know, comes back to haunt you, so it's important they get off to a good start. OK, uh, we are going to talk more about the uh, Scottish Cup final. We're going to talk playoffs as well coming up after the break. And uh, we'll look into some of these back page stories about players coming and going. Uh, and we'll get two seasoned campaigners to stand them up or throw them out. Coming up after the break. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted our guest, the book room guest tonight, is Tony Higgins, who can talk about all things legal as far as the players are concerned and obviously give us his opinion on uh, the modern-day movement of players. We've had uh, no shortage of speculation. One thing that is a definitive, mm -hmm. Ruffy, is Aberdeen have stolen a march and managed to nick Miles' story. He signed for them. Yeah, well, that's a great sign, and I think that was one of the problems with Aberdeen this year. They had uh, big boy Rooney up front, and then when he got injured, off the rails a wee bit. They tried to do without uh, a striker for a two or three games, then they brought in the boy Church. So, I mean, I think if you look at all good teams, you need at least two or three quality strikers, and I think obviously that's what Derek's identified, that maybe a failing was, so that, yeah, I think that's a good sign. Yeah, if I can paint the picture on the opposite side of that, it's John Hughes in a darkened room beating his head <laughs> off the wall because he will be an angry man. He will be, and you think about he achieved uh, last season, you know, and that dramatic finish to the season with the Scottish Cup, and at that, that, that stage people were saying he could never repeat that again, which he didn't, of course, but they had a, a shaky spell there, but they come back really roaring uh, towards the end of the season and they've finished really well in, in, the, in the bottom six, you know. And of course for him it's about recruitment. For all these managers it's about recruitment. Yeah. So he'll be looking, scouring the country, trying to get somebody of a similar elk to replace him. But that it's very difficult to do that year in, year out, you know. At some stage you maybe just miss it. Yeah, and, and, and just picking up on that point, because you were privy to it, Tony, and, uh, and we were as well, uh, Ruffy, picking up the Manager of the Year at the Scottish Football Writers Awards only on uh, Sunday night. Jim McIntyre mm. alluded to mm -hmm. that fact. It's about, you know, picking the right players. That mm. can make or break you. Yeah, but uh, Yogi's problem was uh, from the highs of winning the Cup to the start of the season, he nearly lost a whole mm -hmm. team. You know, four or five of them moved on. Mm. Three or four big players were out injured. Uh, and he just struggled, you know, and obviously we all talk about budgets and his budget isn't as strong as a lot of the, the clubs in the, the division. So he had to sort of abide his time until he got most of the players back uh, that were injured. And as Tony said, they, they did galvanise a wee bit there at the end, but they were going through a terrible The only thing, Peter, they may be able to, on that reputation, you know, the fact is if you come to the Highlands and do well, you can move on to, to great, well, to bigger clubs, earn more money, so that no doubt they probably use that as part of the recruitment, you yeah. know, for somebody, particularly the guys who bring up from England, to come and settle in the Highlands. So that might be something they could use, but it would be very, very difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and looking at some of the other players, I mean, I, I become a little bit cynical in the month of May heading into June, Tony, only yeah. due to the fact that, you know, we all need to fill uh, television programmes and yeah. column inches in newspapers yeah, yeah. with uh, speculation over certain players but um, Joey Barton's gone on holiday to mm. decide whether he's going to go Rangers or mm. Burnley in the mm. Premiership mm. Um, then you've got you know apparently Matt Warburton looking at Nico Crankia mm -hmm. uh, New York Cosmos <laughs> say they want to keep him uh, these are the difficulties even at the top level mm -hmm. uh, of our game you know managers trying to get certain players and as soon as you think a Premier League club's in the game's up yeah yeah but that's why I mean, can understand Mark Warburton because to get a player of that quality uh, two things the quality of the player and secondly what he can earn you know you have to get in early and of course I understand Mark flew to America yeah to engage him at that stage and what he's trying to do is he can't compete anywhere near the money of the Premier League but through enthusiasm and and they talked about the glories of the club the potential glories of the club the size of it the participation in Europe, potentially, all these things, they're hoping that somebody who's earned phenomenal money throughout <coughs> their career might say, well, I'll try a couple of years up here. Uh, but I think the lure of the Premier League is very, very difficult to turn down. And no doubt other clubs in England might fancy them for a year or two as well, not just uh, Burnley. Yeah. yeah and he'd be, he'd be looking at the fact as well, if he was to get Joey Barton, you know, and sign him, it might be easier to attract other people, mm -hmm. you know, when he goes to other players and they see mm -hmm. the kind of player he's yeah, got yeah, at the club. Yeah, so he yeah. might be using that as his first main mm -hmm. signing, 
so that everybody else can join in. Yeah, I mean, it just it, just backing that point up again. I think one of the players that were mentioned was a twenty-year-old USA international at Celtic are looking at Emerson Heinemann, and you're thinking mm. to yourself, well, uh, you know, if other clubs in the Premiership are looking at him, then you're under pressure uh, to try and get him. Also, I'm amazed that they're looking at him, Ruffy, because there's no manager at Celtic. So who's looking at him, yeah. and who's got the final say on this one? Yeah, well, that's a big question, you know, and that's a question we've all been asking, uh, who has been bringing some of these players in, so maybe there's somebody in there who's uh, got a wee steal and the new manager. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Ruffy, if you're looking for him to have a spine, you're going to wait there all day. Um, listen, let's switch direction quickly to uh, a game that uh, uh, has got uh, tremendous interest and Chris Boyd has been mentioning to the Kelly fans to try and get out there. Listen, if they're not going to come out for this one, they're never going to yeah, come yeah, back to watch yeah, Kelly. Yeah. Play off against Falkirk. Well, I think they will turn out for this game. Uh, I think there was uh, around 6,000 for the Partick Thistle game yeah. uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. And there was a, an opportunity of hanging on in there and avoiding the playoffs. So I think they will turn out for this. It's been nice weather at the present time as well. And Falkirk will bring, a, I don't know how many tickets are allocated to Falkirk, but they'll bring their full number of allocation there as well You know, for the second leg. So I think there'll be a real big turnout of both sets of fans. You know, and Kilmarnock, it's their last chance to remain there and Falkirk on the crest of the wave after um, beating Hibs in, in the playoff. Just on that point, before I get your prediction on it, Tony, um, uh, as, uh, as a man who's got his finger on the pulse of the players and, and you, know, you know, the requirements that they need, legalities of their contracts and, and whatever, when you look at our league, do you, would you like to see it being extended to a bigger league uh, as well? I think that the, 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 for playing side, yes, but I think the problem is commercially. Uh, the, the big issues that it would uh, 30 games a season, for instance, or 32, unless they come to some permutation, uh, you know, they have in Austria where they break away after a certain time, the yeah. top six or eight play against each other. I think commercially, the problem for the football here is that the broadcasters want four old firm games, four Edinburgh derbies if possible, yes. you know, so they want a Dundee derbies if possible. So that football in Scotland, because of what we talked about earlier, a bit of denial of financial um, capital means that they'll, they'll look commercially at what they can achieve, then look at the system almost the other way about, you know. And for the aesthetics in the game, people may say, no, I'd rather I'd have a 16 or 18 club league. Um, but I don't think that'll ever come as long as the game is dictated by commercial instincts. Yeah, and when you travel across <coughs> Europe and the world, uh, is there a general feeling that our, our football over a... Obviously, without Rangers, but is there a general feeling our football has dropped significantly now? We... We can't get teams past qualifying in Europe. We can't qualify for major championships. Our days of being a, a nation still considered to be at the main party are long gone. Oh, they're long gone. You know, I think most people, they still respect Scottish football in the sense they know it's very competitive and we still um, export some players to the divisions in England. But I think in terms of status, it's not what it was because correspondingly, we're not uh, achieving international as well, level as well. And of course, that brings the perception down as well. Um, but um, but that's this is not uh, dissimilar to many other countries in Europe because yeah. all the money is gravitating to different areas and other leagues are becoming disempowered. That's why for you see in many countries that uh, they'll change the league to any format if they can get a decent commercial sponsor yeah. because unless they get that sponsorship, they can't even keep their half decent players in the country. Yeah, and of course in your day, <coughs> you mentioned uh, something to us before we come on here. Here's a, here's a story with Kieran Tierney. He's only had one season, and already we've got a situation where you're saying Man City, Arsenal, mm -hmm. all having a look at him, potentially £10 million. Pounds. That boy needs another two or three years here. Yeah. Um, in my view, I don't know how you see that. Yeah, I mean, I always take the view that, um, you know, cause people will occasionally ask me about certain players when I'm travelling, and I'm no scout, but I will say there's a guy playing there or playing there here or there. But I think that around 150 first team games, you know, is really that that, that you can establish yourself then as a, a first team player. Um, and I think that's important for young players to, to understand that uh, of course the motivation if Arsenal come for your Manchester United, it's very, very difficult to turn that down. Yeah. But you go there a way down the pecking order, you know, and you might never get to near the first team. Well I think if you stay at a top club in Scotland and play your 150 games, um, and establish yourself. You go there with the mentality of a first-team player. You might not walk straight into the side, but you yeah. go there being prepared to be 
part of the squad. We've seen that with uh, Andrew Robertson, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, in, in your day, the good thing about mm -hmm. you and Tony is you get a good 300 games under your belt before you had to sign yeah. another extension. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him coming in one morning he said, I heard Real Madrid's interest in me, but I'm quite happy here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Or oh, is there any chance, Robbie, you Absolute. can drive me to the airport to get me, to get me out of here and away from birth to old? Um, absolutely magnificent. OK. Um, give me your prediction, Falkirk or uh, Kilmarnock over the two legs. I think because of the momentum and the spirit in the Falkirk squad, I think it may go to penalties, but I think they'll edge it over the two legs. Yeah, Ruffy? Yeah, I think Falkirk as well. There's too many things happening behind the scenes at Kilmarnock uh, for any success to happen there, I think. OK, uh, listen, uh, we could have made another five programmes uh, with Tony on his wealth of knowledge. In fact, look out in the summer for another football special when we get into the meat and bones of Tony's playing career as well. Uh, but for now, stay with us all through the week. We will continue the build-up to the Scottish Cup final. And, of course, uh, we will also discuss the playoffs in depth and get the predictions and the reactions from our other guests. Thanks for watching tonight.